All right, YouTube, thank you for joining me today. We're going to run up a quick session, giving you guys my reaction to Michael Saylor, Kathy Wood, the conversation that they had at the Bitcoin Miami conference. And uh, it's been interesting to listen to some of the interviews, some of the um, speeches that have been coming from this conference recently. The Bitcoin maxis have absolutely lost their mind. Michael Saylor in particular. I don't know what reality he is living in. This was absolutely hilarious. But let's just run through a couple of the main bullet points. So uh, the first interesting thing is just it's so funny to me how they call it orange pilling. Basically giving people, you know, uh, talking about the matrix, giving them the red pill, right? This is giving them the orange pill, teaching them about Bitcoin and how Bitcoin's going to save the world and solve all of our problems. That's what the orange pill is all about. So that that's just funny to me that that's what they consider this. Um, and yet they call the XRP community a cult. It's, it's just weird. But, um, okay, so we started off by Michael Saylor saying that the executive order from Biden approves bitcoin and this is where i i mean i don't know what reality he's living in because it couldn't be further from the truth they specifically talk about the energy consumption of these networks in that executive order right so him saying that this is the approval or basically the rubber stamp green lighting bitcoin what what are you on dude i don't know what michael saylor is talking about i don't know if he's just trolling if he just is a promoter and wants to raise money for his fund, but this dude has absolutely lost it. The executive order most definitely did not approve Bitcoin. In fact, I would be worried, more worried, after the executive order came out if I held Bitcoin. Another quote from him that was absolutely hilarious, he said, it's so good they have to ban it. He said that that's you know, been the narrative recently, basically that Bitcoin's so good, it's so powerful, that they have to ban it, which is just absurd. That's not why they're interested in banning it, right? Uh, they're interesting. They're interested in saving themselves and the banking, the financial system, right? We know that the DeFi space is most definitely attacking the you know one percent interest rate that the bank's going to give you on your savings, right? It's an absolute joke. We all get that, but just this orange pill Bitcoin maxi mentality. Uh, basically saying that it's so good they have to ban it. It's like Bitcoin's not a threat to anything, bro. It's really not a threat to anything. Maybe taking a little bit of the market cap of gold, but we haven't seen the market cap in gold really go down. Gold's been suppressed, and we know that all of the central banks across the world are holding record amounts of gold. They don't hold any Bitcoin besides El Salvador. Um, so... <laughs> I, I, it's just hilarious. Now, uh, then we had Kathy Wood saying, this is incorrect. This is, I just, I don't get it. You know, I would expect better out of these people, right? They run massive hedge funds. People are listening and investing hundreds of millions of dollars with them. And yet Kathy Wood here is reiterating that the SEC said that Bitcoin wasn't a security. That is not true. And we now have that proven in court uh, through the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit. We know that they're now saying that that Hinman speech was just his opinion, right? This is the whole defense of the SEC. So what, what are you talking about saying that Bitcoin is not a security? That is not the official position of the SEC. They still have not given a position. Do I think that they're going to say Bitcoin's a security? Not really. But they, st they still have the case because of the Bitcoin mining uh, aspect of it, the proof of work aspect of it. Uh, there is an argument to be made, I would say. Now, uh, this is this was absolutely hilarious. Michael Saylor goes on to say how all of the events over the last year, the Russia-Ukraine war, he, he just listed off everything, the, the trucker convoy in Canada, all the crisis, uh, all the crises that we're seeing across the world. He says that they're all bullish for Bitcoin. And it's just so funny to me that it's Bitcoin is the end all be all. Yes, the Russia-Ukraine situation has exposed the reserve currency status of the U.S. dollar. It's exposed the SWIFT payment network. But Bitcoin doesn't solve the SWIFT network, right? Bitcoin doesn't solve anything. It's an absolute joke. But these people are just so high on this Bitcoin hopium. Uh, it's like Dan Pena says, I don't know what you're smoking, but as long as it's not addictive, give me some of that. G give me some of that stuff, right? It's an absolute joke, and I have no idea where they come up with these things where everything is bullish for Bitcoin. 
that is not the case. Then why is Bitcoin down 40% from the all-time high, right? Um, it, it's just silly. Now, Michael Saylor continues on. A big part of his speech was all about the Lightning Network and how he only wants to do business with people that are adopting and building and help scale out the Lightning Network, which is the whole problem with the Lightning Network is that it doesn't scale. Everything that they're talking about the Lightning Network how they want to make it frictionless, seamless, easy to use. The problem is, is it doesn't scale up. And, and the problem is, is that we already have other blockchains that have accomplished everything you guys are trying to do with your Lightning Network. But they've actually fixed it. They've actually solved the problem. It's just hilarious. But he was really pushing the Lightning thing. So much so, he says that if you want to be successful, you support the Bitcoin standard and that not supporting lightning is not excuse me not supporting lightning is not supporting the internet that's how crazy this is no bitcoin and ethereum are holding back the internet web3 the world technology the innovation that we have here with blockchain distributed ledger technology we have way more efficient distributed ledger technologies than bitcoin when will you admit that? There's no point in scaling up uh, something that is unscalable in the Lightning Network and we can move away from burning off in, in all this energy. Which is another thing that is just hilarious is even Kevin O'Leary, well, I listened to his speech today as well, he's saying that Bitcoin mining is going to solve all the world's problems because we're going to figure out how to make energy more efficient, more efficiently. Now, I, I, could, I could get into the energy issue. That's a whole other separate issue. I'm not going to get into that here. But it's just funny to me how Bitcoin mining is going to save the whole world. It's an absolute joke. Now, this is, this is so funny because Kevin O'Leary mentioned his main issue was regulations for stable coins, which I thought was hilarious. We're at the Bitcoin conference. And if we read the Bitcoin white paper, it says peer-to-peer -peer cash. It is meant to replace the U.S. dollar, but yet here at the conference, the major keynote speaker is saying that we need regulatory clarity for stable coins. That's the main issue. You can't make this up. The conference is an absolute embarrassment for the whole cryptocurrency space, but mostly for the Bitcoin maxis that eat up this. Uh, it's unbelievable. So they want to move stable coins over to the Lightning Network. Every single problem that they mention that, that by moving to the Lightning Network they're going to solve has already been solved by XLM, XRP, and dozens of other blockchains. And it's funny because even Saylor says in this, in this speech that they would use US dollars or Euro for a medium of exchange, but on top of the Lightning Network. Why would we put it on something that's so inefficient when we have... The Central Bank of England already piloted the XRP ledger back in 2018. We already have multiple countries, central bank digital currencies on top of the XRP ledger. You guys still can't figure out how to scale up Lightning Network for 100,000 users with their phones. So, so what are you talking about putting CBDCs on it? You guys are so far behind. It, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. Now, Kathy Wood, she goes on to say this is her speech, her pitch to all the institutional investors that are trying to invest with her. She says, Bitcoin is the first global, private, digital, rules-based monetary system in the world. Now, yeah, that's great. But just because you're first doesn't mean you're the best. Doesn't mean you're the most efficient. Doesn't mean you solve the biggest problem, right? Great, you made it to market first. That's why you've achieved the status that you have. Step aside and let's actually use some distributed ledger technologies that can actually solve the trillion dollar problems. Today, you can build the central bank digital currency launched on the XRP ledger in one day. We don't need to figure out how to scale anything up. We don't need to do an ETH 2.0 upgrade. We've already got you guys beat. Now, this was also funny. It's so funny with these guys. Michael Saylor says, if you want to figure out, if you want to turn $250 million into $6 billion, invest in Bitcoin. Because that's what he did. Which is an absolute joke. All you are doing is raising money. You are finding people that are as just as big of fools as you. 
They know they're losing the dollar. The, the, if they have millions, hundreds of millions, billions of dollars, they knew they know that they're losing the value of that. So yeah, they're desperate to put it somewhere. They come get orange pilled by you, drink your guys's little secret sauce that doesn't get anything done besides save your guys's ass, continue to pet, perpetuate the the Bitcoin narrative here that keeps your bags inflated. That's why you guys are still on this, right? Turn two hundred fifty million dollars into six billion. Anybody can raise that money, right? Uh, that that doesn't take skill. Anybody can raise that money. That's not an investment. That's not turning two hundred fifty million dollars and profiting, getting up to six billion, getting your gains. No, that's just raising more money, doing hundred fifty million dollar investments in Bitcoin, and then it crashes twenty percent right after, and then you bra you buy again, and then you brag about it. I mean, either this guy's going to turn out to be the the biggest genius ever, or you know maybe he'll repeat what he did last financial crisis in being one of the biggest losers in the last financial crisis. People are so quick to forget. I was going to pull up the articles on that for you guys. I'll have to share that in another video. But Michael Saylor was one of the biggest losers in the previous financial crisis, <laughs> and now he's bragging about turning two hundred fifty million dollars into six billion. You just raised the money, bro. You weren't a smart investor. Now, I did find this funny. He he was talking to Merrill Lynch. He said this story about how he was basically trying to invest $175 million that he had, I guess, at Merrill Lynch, and they wouldn't do it, and they weren't interested in it. So then he bragged about, you know, wiring the $175 million out of Merrill Lynch. But what he said, and this is interesting for the whole cryptocurrency space, is that now these guys are getting in. Now these guys are prepared to handle these types of folks and they're getting they're getting all their ducks in a row they're waiting for a few more st uh, stamps of approval for regulations but uh you know they're ready to uh they're ready to take his money now so you know if if he's dumb enough to invest it into bitcoin they'll invest it for him they'll collect the fees now interesting fact um and and, and the reason why that's important is because for the overall digital currency space it's massive right the institutions are coming the, the big hedge funds, the Wall Street types, they're all coming. So that's great for the space. Now, Kathy Wood in particular, she says that 2.5% of institutional money will go into Bitcoin. Now, um, you know, we're talking about trillions of dollars that's still yet to flow into the space. I always say that the $3 trillion market cap we hit last year, we peaked out at a three trillion dollar market cap for the whole space. That was a joke. I mean, it was cool. It was good for the space. It was a is a milestone, but we have so much more to achieve. I'm talking a hundred times, one thousand times that. We have hundreds of trillions and quadrillions of dollars of value to run across distributed ledger technology. So we're just getting started. But the winner, in my opinion, will not be Bitcoin. You guys can invest however you want to. This is not financial advice, but Michael Saylor gives us financial advice here at the end of his speech. This is how he finished it out. Michael Saylor's closing words, quote, you do not sell your Bitcoin. Now, the whole time I'm just comparing this because I have to. You guys know I'm an XRP maxi, but uh, basically I'm just a utility maxi. I, I want things that actually get something done. XRP is just one of the utility coins. But I was comparing this with Ripple's swell. And when I listen to Brad Garlinghouse talk, when I listen to David Schwartz, people within Ripple, or even people from Stellar, XDC, these other solid projects, none of them say ridiculous statements like, you do not sell your XRP. You do not sell your XLM. Can you imagine Brad Garlinghouse saying that? Right? Even though everyone wants to criticize Ripple, everyone wants to criticize what they're doing over there, Brad Garlinghouse, a team, even though they've been the most transparent and none of their speeches, none of what they say out here in the public is, you need to hodl XRP. That's crazy. This is so immature, right? Um, and I mean, just look at him. Just look, at, he lo looks like a bum. Quite frankly, he looks like a bum. But anyways, um, <laughs> it's a joke with these guys. And then after after they got done with the interview, they went to the... Uh, what do you call it? They went to the, uh, sorry, they went to the commentators, which was Ben Askren, Dave Portnoy, and, um, you know, this was put on by Bitcoin Magazine. I was listening to them, their coverage. 
and they got Dave Portnoy on there who runs Barstool Sport Barstool Sports. And I thought this was just hilarious. And this goes to show you how stupid the Bitcoin community really is, uh, to be honest. Dave Portnoy was talking about how he's never going to sell his Bitcoin too, right? They were giving their reaction to Michael Saylor saying, we don't sell our Bitcoin. And Dave Portnoy comes on and says, I'm not, I'm never selling my Bitcoin either. But then he goes on to say, they're talking about cold storage. Dave Portnoy didn't even know what cold storage was. He says, I just have my, my Bitcoin on the exchange. Well, if you're never going to sell your Bitcoin, why do you have it on the exchange? You would put it on a cold storage device in your long-term storage secure solution. But it just goes to show you how much of a joke and how full of BS these people are. You know, I, I kind of like uh, Barstool Sports and what they do over there. I think it's cool. Dave, he's whatever. He's cool. But it just goes to show you, man. They just eat it up. They go to do the influencer thing and hang out and be cool. And, you know, it, it's a joke. It's really immature for the cryptocurrency space as a whole. As I've been stating, you know, it's a completely different conversation, stature of uh, a people in the room when you look at a Ripple Swell conference compared to the Bitcoin conference. But, uh, you know, I just wanted to give my thoughts on this. I think that it is, uh, you know, hilarious to watch these guys orange pill everyone and continue this narrative that Bitcoin is the end all be all when we already have a dozen other solutions that have actually got things done. So, you know, good luck to the Bitcoin maxis. I hope it works out for them. But uh, you guys know that how I have positioned myself, I'm not here to give you financial advice, but I am here to tell you that Michael Saylor and this Bitcoin orange pill narrative is an absolute joke and position yourself accordingly and be careful out there. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and God bless. Thank you for sharing this message and smashing that thumbs up on the way out. We'll see you.